right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from beautiful blue sky San Diego. And today I'm joined by Bobby Umar, who is up in Toronto, Canada, just as beautifully blue sky I believe. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And Bobby is an inspirational speaker, coach, and one of the most prolific advocates of heart based leadership in North America. Inc. Magazine named him one of the top 100 leadership speakers. And you have at least three books, I think, and in, uh, international books, including a number one bestseller, correct? Yes, got it all. Nice. Absolutely. Fantastic. And I'm, I'm really excited because today what we're going to talk about is personal branding. So whether you're pivoting, positioning, or aligning, it's worth investment. So, um, Bobby, um, you know, let's let's uh, baseline this for a moment. Sure. When you talk personal branding, what do you mean by that? Because I always find that people still have um, mixed ideas about what personal branding means. So, personal branding really is the idea of understanding how you are perceived in the world, and what it's kind of basically your reputation, the integrity that you have, how what people think of you, how they perceive you. Ultimately, how they experience you uh, emotionally. And so a brand is something that is something that's memorable, but creates an emotional experience. So you have a personal brand because everyone around you knows who you are and they feel a certain way about you. Hopefully it's mostly good and very little bad. Everyone has a little bit of bad, but you want to keep it mostly good. But the other part about personal brand is that it also has to be aligned because it has to be aligned with what you're doing. If you're a real estate agent, but everyone sees you as a shoe salesman, well, that's a little bit of a disconnect. So that's what's called a misaligned brand. And you want to make sure that what's out there, what, what's being, what, how you're being perceived is aligned with what you're trying to put out there. Because if it's not, then that's also going to lead to issues around your career, feeling unfulfilled, it's going to lead to business uh, results that are not as good as they could be. And so one aspect is knowing how people perceive you and what your brand is, what your reputation is. The second piece is creating something that's aligned with what you're trying to put out there and what you're trying to accomplish uh, with your career or your business. And the reality is that uh, whether you're whether you're uh, deliberately building your personal brand, you have a brand. You have a personal brand already. To your that's point, that's right. Your, rep your reputation exists whether you like it or not. People yeah. will be creating your brand, so you might as well take ownership of it. So, what's the first step in that? I mean, how do you maybe even start by assessing what your personal brand is today? Well, I mean, the first thing that people do is really they do their own kind of assessment of they assess their skills and their interests, their traits and their passions. And they, and they kind of get a, a good list of kind of where their values and things like that. But the other part that's really important is actually getting the assessment of other people. So often I'll get my clients to do a survey uh, across the board, family, friends, coworkers, bosses, subordinates, and they then answer questions about how they perceive and they feel you. That's where you start to get some really good information about it because often how, well, how you self-assess yourself is not aligned with how people perceive you. That's also usually a disconnect that leads to misalignment of people who don't feel unhappy with their jobs. And so doing that deep dive along with some online assessments allows you a chance to kind of really look at all the data and see what, what are some of the themes and threads that kind of fit together. So for example, when I did my personal brand journey a long time mm -hmm. ago, across the board, one of the things that screamed at me was everything that I should do has to do with people. And when I think about my job where I was an engineer and I worked in front of a computer screen for 10 hours a day, not talking to anybody, I can tell now why I was miserable because I wasn't dealing with people. Mm -hmm. Had I been in sales, maybe it would have been better. So right. that led me to become a professional speaker and coach because people need to be a big part of what I did. And so I think a lot of people, when they do that deep dive, that's the first thing they do. But a lot of people are also, they don't do the work. Like it, it takes a bit of time. It's not like, it's not like snap your fingers. No, in two hours, I'll figure about my brand. You know, this is a 20, 30, 40 hour investment of your time to really, really figure it out. Yeah, and, and, and I love that because uh, because I do think that, uh, you know, you'll see people say, oh, well, I'll create your personal brand for you in five minutes or whatever. Right. You're like, yeah, great. Or even as you say, I mean, the awareness part, because that's one of the toughest thing is self-awareness, right? Because yeah. we perceive ourselves one way and people perceive ourselves another way. Right. So, and that, and that may take a little bit of time at the beginning to work through, because like you said, if you solicit the input of other people, maybe you get a whole lot of information about yourself that, maybe you need a little time to actually process. Absolutely. And the other part that's different is that people will give, have different perspectives. So mm -hmm. the part that's really important are the ones that are at, that everyone has the same. You know, two people might say, you're a high-level thinker. Many people might say, you're an analytical person. But if everyone says you're analytical or that you're annoying, <laughs> then you know what? 
<laughs> you're annoying and you have to own it. You have to embrace the, the good and the bad. And that's going to help you hone. Because the first part is to, to just dive in, discover the brand. Once you know all that information, then you can start working on the design and the delivery of that. Brand. Yeah, or annoyingly analytical. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. um, okay, so so when you get that information and all of that, then the, what's the first part of actually starting to, yeah, as you say, build it and put your brand out there and start to evolve your brand? Well, I mean, one of the things to keep in mind is that you know, once you've discovered your brand, then the design piece is where you kind of look at. You mm -hmm. have to look at, okay, what's your objective? Who's the target audience you, you're willing to serve? And then you have to look at your assets. What do I currently have? What are some of the skills and things I need to work on? And then once you have all that, then you decide to design that strategy. So for example, let's say I'm a real estate agent and I'm targeting uh, you know, women over 50. Once I, once I know who that is, then I can decide, okay, what are the emotions? Of, how, do I, how does my audience feel? What are the emotions? How does my brand relate to, the, to their emotions and my objectives? And then you can design a brand and a social media strategy, for example, to target where these women are and make sure it aligns with your story and your brand and what you're trying. And usually what I'll do is, you know, the key piece is knowing the target audience, uh, which lines your objectives and knowing what your brand is and find that connection piece to those mm -hmm. two things. So for example, for me, you know, I talk about pivoting positioning. So I say, look, if you're pivoting or positioning, I'm a personal brand expert, let me help you. But I talk to them on terms of how they're feeling about being stuck or unfulfilled right. or kind of, you know, and uh, feeling lost in where they are in their career. And so let me help them pivot or reposition themselves. Yeah, and I guess uh, just come back to the example you're using a moment ago, though. Uh, obviously, there has to be authenticity in it too, right? Yes. I mean, you can't you can't create a brand that's not you. Yeah, I agree. And uh, in the beginning process, when you're going through the whole discovery piece, a lot of a lot of people, I tell them, I say, look, start with the truth. If you value, you know, uh, social social rank, or you value status. Put that in your values. Mm. Don't don't lie to yourself. Don't be like, no, I only value feeding all those poor people of the world. No. Yeah. <laughs> if you value money, then say so because you want to create a brand that's you. Because if you don't, the problem with creating a brand that's not you is that it's actually harder to, to remain consistently authentic on brand. And on top of that, it's exhausting. I mean, why spend mm -hmm. your time being someone that you're not? Try to find something that you are and then really just live that brand because it's easier. Yeah, no, I, th I think I think that's I think that's uh, it's great advice because I do think that some people like they think that it's putting on a persona, and I think that's where personal branding and and putting on a persona kind of got a little bit skewed because yeah. you can you can see somewhere where people, you know, their their brand that they put out, but then when you engage with them, there's a there's a bit of a disconnect. Yes, yeah, and, and I think people can see right through that. Uh, you know, authenticity mm -hmm. is something that people can definitely see through, and particularly if you're working in sales. Ultimately, you want to build a relationship. You want to build a relationship of trust and authenticity. If they don't have that trust, I mean, ultimately, everything you're doing in life, career, business, sales, you name it, it's about people. And it's about mm -hmm. building trust. And if you don't have something that's authentic, if you don't have something that's aligned, if you don't have something that you know, leverages your brand to answer their needs, you're not going to get clients. You're not going to get followers. You're not going to get people that are going to engage you. Yeah, and and still some people struggle with that whole piece about about um, you know really putting themselves out there, even if that's their job, as you said. I mean, even if they're in sales or whatever, they still get a little bit you know a bit queasy about really pushing their own brand per se. Yeah, I think people uh, get nervous about that, and people, uh, often people are nervous about starting content or putting things out there. One mm -hmm. of the most important ways to kind of reframe your mind is just to think about, look, I'm trying to create value for the people that I serve. If you know your target audience and you know the pain that they feel, then do everything you can to serve and create value for those people. If you just do it from that kind of authentic standpoint, not even worry about selling. Selling will come after. Mm -hmm. A strong brand will eventually lead to conversations, which then eventually can lead to the sales. But for now, mm -hmm. just focus on creating value for those people and help them out. And eventually when you do that, you'll build a strong brand and you will start conversations. Yeah, and I think that's a, and I think that's a good point as well is for people to take away as well is that I mean part of it is just uh, is is as you said figuring out your target audience and how you can bring value to them, and then just doing the things that you would normally do, and if you're doing them in support of helping those people, then you're naturally building brand. Yeah, ex absolutely. I think one of the best ways to build a brand is to just create content and put stuff out there that you know are is aligned with what you care about. And it's on brand with who you are. And, and you know, again, the, the best part is when you put out the right brand, the right people will follow you. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, and so it's much easier, I think, in the end to obviously, you know, once you've maybe, um, you know, smoothed off any rough edges, but to, to try and be as much of yourself as you can and project as much of you as possible. Yeah, I mean, authenticity goes a long way. So does vulnerability. I mean, these are ways that, you know, people really connect with. And so if you aren't able to do that with your content or even on the call, you know, people are going to see right through that. They, they're, they want to work with people that they can relate to, that they feel comfortable with. And ultimately, that, that relationship is going to be what drives your growth in anything, whether it's your career or your business. And then just the reality of the world we live in today, and obviously, you know, we're still in the midst of, um, of, of this pandemic and stuff. But so your, your digital brand now is, if it was always important, but now it's incredibly important. And a lot of your Absolutely. interaction is going to be done you know, via Zoom and other things. So yeah. you have to make, you have to have an all-encompassing approach, if you like, now. Absolutely. And the, you know, the pandemic has really accelerated the need to leverage technology and deliver an online presence. So mm-hmm. you have to now think about what's my presence going to be on, on Zoom, on LinkedIn, on email messages, on voice calls and things like that. Well, what are you doing to actually enhance that brand online? I think it's huge. And so a lot of the work that I'm telling people to work on is like LinkedIn profiles and websites. What are you doing to enhance these things? Because now in the COVID world, we don't know how long it's going to last. Virtual is going to be a big part of life. It's, and we've accelerated the, the, the advent of virtual the life in our workplace. So it's even more important now to not only build a strong presence, but also using your brand to clear through the clutter and have a focused message that really resonates with people. Yeah, and one other really interesting phenomenon is that, you know, you can, you can have salespeople who are, you know, they'll walk into a room full of people. They're very gregarious and all of this, you know, they've got a networking event with people and they're running. Yeah. And then you put them on Zoom and you say, switch on your camera. And they're like, what? Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're talking like this. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. yeah. And it's funny. And then it's like, uh, and, and we, and we have found, and obviously you would agree with this though, you know, when you engage with, with prospects or whatever, if you switch on your camera, even if it's only at the beginning for a while, yeah. You, break down that whole barrier and even if the other person doesn't do it it doesn't matter because you put yourself out there yeah i mean there's a lot of studies and data out there that shows that the, using voice messages on linkedin or using even video messages or calls have a far greater chance of connecting with them and, and make it create more relatability so yeah even that even that quick one minute video at the beginning before you get to the audio call or whatever is a fantastic way to create that connection and build that Rapport. I mean, you know, that first five minutes of rapport is so crucial in any sort of meeting. So I highly recommend people using video, but also getting used to using video and getting good at it. Make that first, just like back in the old days of networking, you know, make a firm handshake. Well, same thing with video. Make that video be amazing for the first five minutes. Yeah, exactly. And then practice. I mean, it, it, it doesn't come naturally to. So I, I've seen in the past, I've seen people who've been terrible in person, have been fantastic online and vice versa and all of that. So like everything else, it, t- it takes some it takes some practice. But it is going to be a huge part of, of your brand now is your how you come across, you know, online and in, in virtual meetings and all of that. It's going to be a huge part of it. Yeah, and I think uh, there's a lot of, tra- I mean, not everyone's a natural. So I think there's, there's sure. ways you can train to do that, but there's ways to actually get better. I mean, I teach introverts how to network. I also now I have teaching speakers how to speak more effectively on Zoom and on video calls mm-hmm. because it is a different skill set, but you can do it. You can build it up and build up the, the right tools and te- techniques to become quite effective at uh, business and video calls. Yeah, yeah, no, it is, and uh, and uh, and the right setup and the way to yeah, you know yeah. operate everything. Yeah, it's it's a skill set like like anybody and like any other. Um, so, what are in in the last few minutes, uh, Bobby? What are some other uh, piece of advice you would give to people who are looking at really turbocharging their brand? Well, aside from taking the time to invest in, I think that uh, you know one is uh, try to find either a coach that can help you be accountable and uh, and to really ten extra results and get you there because I think people. Could, could take six months to a year. And if you want to pivot right away, if you're able to pivot quickly, getting a coach would really help or an advisory board of some sort of some sort of peer group, like a group coaching or mastermind kind of circle. I think that works really well for, for a lot of people. And then I think the third one, which is something I, I'm going to encourage people with, which is to just start. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of people just stay away from even starting. Just start with that blog post or that, that quick video post or just, just ask for help. And you'll be surprised if you just share an authentic video post of how, you know, I've never done video before, but I'm working on my brand. I'm trying to re-pivot my, my business or my brand. Uh, I'm looking for people to help me on the journey. You'll be surprised with that, how many people will love that kind of stuff. 
And once you've done honest, and honestly, once you've done even just three or four, mm-hmm. it'll become so much easier. It'll be a hundred times easier after the fourth video that you've done. So just start. Yeah. Get yeah, feedback, and I, put it out there. Yeah, and I, I think that's a the, the great piece of advice. And I do think, unfortunately, that's what holds people back from most things. It's like, you know what? The, you know what the best time to start something is right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> amen, amen to that. Amen. Or yeah. yesterday. Oh, yesterday. Exactly. Hey, listen, Bobby, this has been fantastic. Before we go, though, uh, all of Bobby's information will be in his contributor bio and all the links. But please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yeah, so I'm a professional speaker and trainer and coach, although now the focus is more on coaching. And I do a lot of coaching uh, these days on personal branding and career transition. So if you're looking to transition your career, leverage your brand, dive into it, understand what it is, then basically I can help you figure that out help you design the, the brand strategy and deliver it uh, and out there to kind of ramp up your business or to build up a thought leadership brand for yourself. Yeah. And maybe do a little bit, uh, maybe a little exercise for everybody is do a little bit of an audit of what your online brand looks like right now. Absolutely. Quick, <laughs> and maybe do a quick, quick Google search, see what, see, see what shows up. Yeah, yeah, and see when you put it all together, is that the composite view of yourself that you want? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, this, this has been fantastic, Bobby. Thanks for joining us today. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. See you all again soon. Thank you. Thank you.